Let's take a look at the image object properties. So I'm going to go into my gallery here. I'm going to go into the image gallery and I'm going to select an image from the button shapes folder here. So I'm just going to find something suitable. This orange button should work well. And I'll move it here onto our stage. Okay, this is a ping image so it has a transparent area around it. As you can see if I duplicate the button for example and overlap it, the shadow is semi-transparent and it interacts perfectly with the shadow underneath. Okay, So we've got this ping image and we've got a transparent area and we've got an opaque area. For example where the button is that's opaque and where there's nothing here around this area in the bounding box that's the transparent area. So the hit test area is basically the area where the mouse is going to react to this button. So in this case just the shape area. So that's one of the really great unique features of Autoplay Media Studio in that it automatically tracks your buttons for that hit test area. We'll take a look at that option here though as we go through these um, image object properties. So let's double click on that button to bring up the properties dialog. We'll take a quick look through here. As you can see there's three panels here like normal, actions, attributes, and settings. If we go to the attributes you'll see it's all the normal stuff that you expect to see. You can attach sounds to your object. You can set the size and position. You can set a tool tip and that's the text that's going to appear when someone has their mouse over it. You can check the spelling on the tool tip. You can set up a custom cursor for when they have their mouse over top of it. And you can name your object here as well as um, toggle the enabled state and the visible state. So you can make your object invisible here and you can set it to be visible using an action later quite easily and so forth. So these are the same attributes that we see available for all of the objects that we're looking at basically. The differences with the image object are here in the settings panel. As you can see that one of the really interesting features that's been added for the image object here in version 5.0 in the special area here is the opacity feature. So let's go ahead and reduce our opacity on this object to 60% and press OK. And we'll just take a quick look at what this is first. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this object a few times and stretch them out. And as you can see, it's reduced the opacity of the object so it's semi-transparent and you can see everything beneath it. Now you can set this up as a percentage in that area of the image property. So I'm going to go back to there by double clicking on this object. As you can see here, if I put it at 100, our object becomes 100% opaque. So if I duplicate it, you can't see the button underneath. But if I double click on here and set this to say 50%, then it becomes 50% opaque, 50% transparent, and you can easily see the object beneath. So you can fool around with that and get the best settings for your projects. It's very powerful. It allows you to blend things with your backgrounds and do some really cool stuff. Shadow effects, glowing effects, and so forth. Here we've got the hit test area as well. This is what we discussed a little bit earlier in this lesson where we were discussing the area of the object where your mouse will react to it. So in, in this case, just the boundary of the image in there, the pill shape of the button, right? Okay, so you can choose standard or alpha and basically either would work well in this scenario, we'll leave it to standard, but the beautiful thing is that it's going to track that button perfectly at runtime so that um, the roundness of the button, the mouse actually follows that contour perfectly. Unlike some programs that actually convert round buttons into square buttons at runtime in terms of the hit area. Okay, So let's take a look at this transparent color area. I'm going to press OK. I'm going to go ahead and delete these from our stage. To look at the transparent color area, we're going to need an image that has a large area of solid color. So we'll go back into the gallery. I'm going to go into the upper level of the images gallery and go into the window masks folder. I'm going to look through here for one that, oh, well, this is a pretty good one, the star one. OK, I'm going to drag it on. It asks me if I want to set it as my background. I'm going to say no. And I'm just going to drag it over the stage here and stretch it out a bit. OK, now this is a black and white image that we've got from our window masks and that's actually what it's used for. But in this case we're going to set that white area to be transparent. So I'm going to double click on that image and in the transparent color area I'm going to choose make color transparent and from the color pull down I'm going to choose white. I'm going to leave the tolerance at 10 for now just so I can see and I'm going to press OK. As you can see the tolerance of 10 worked very well and now we've cut that transparent area there. So basically what we were able to do is create a, a very attractive and functional pseudo transparency in a non-transparent image by selecting that color. Okay, 
So again, if I double click on here and take the transparency off, you'll see that the image itself is just a black and white image. And if I re-engage the transparency here, you'll see that it's actually taken the color that we specified and taken it out of the image, turned that area into transparent. So that's a, a really powerful feature that you can use here. Okay, so that's the image object properties. Other than that, we've got the same properties that you would expect from any of the objects. We'll go ahead and get rid of this preview area and we can look at the properties pane. For example, you can title your object. So in this case, I'll call it star. You can change the file. In this case, you've got the special feature of the image object, which is you can set the opacity. So if I set the overall op opacity of this image here to 50%, you'll see that it reduces the non-transparent area. So that's a beautiful feature, very, very powerful. Here we've got the transparent color area we looked at. And we've got, of, of course, we've got that set up with our star image here with the white color and the tolerance. And we looked at the hit test area, so that tracks the area of the image which you want to be um, clickable. And then we've got the typical attributes you expect from any of these objects. For example, the sounds that react to the mouse coming over top of it or clicking on it. Um, <coughs> excuse me, such as uh, the user clicking on your, your object or using it as a button, okay? And we've got the uh, uh, custom cursor options, the tool tip option, and the enabled invisibility options, and so forth, that we would expect from any object. We, we can set the size here, we can set the position, and we can attach actions to the various states, the various mouse states of our image. Okay, so that's the properties for the image object, and now we'll move on to the image object actions.